So we had NCAA Final Four championships that happened on Sunday and Monday. First off, we had the women. Highest rated show, Chris, outside of a football game in ESPN history. Yeah. Was South Carolina versus Iowa. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think anybody ever thought that a women's college basketball game, if you eliminate football, would have been the highest rated show in the history of ESPN. Absolutely incredible, the popularity of women's college basketball right now. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's the star power of, of Caitlin Clark and also, uh, you know, uh, the South Carolina team being being undefeated. I mean, I think they had a narrative. They had a much better narrative uh, than the men did. They think they tried to create one. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that's what happens. I, I was blown away that it was watched so much more heavily than the men's. Um, and then you, you added that in more than anything other than a football game. So great for uh, women's basketball. Hopefully spills over great for the WNBA as well, you know? I think it will. I, I don't think there's any question that it will. Number one, because the WNBA draft is uh, it's the 15th, so that's right around the corner. If that's on ESPN, you know that that's going to get huge numbers. And then people are going to tune in to see if Caitlin Clark is everything that everybody says that she is. People are going to tune into that. We'll get into her legacy later, but right. – you know, I just think from what happened, the phenomenon that got built on last year, it just kept rolling. And then people were like, you know what? We can identify with these women. You know, they stick around for three and four years, even if they yeah. change teams. Okay, fine. But they stick around. We can identify with them and we can get behind them. And I think that's why the popularity became so big and people started to watch that. Versus the men, because although, look, if we're, let's be honest, obviously the men basketball is better. But it wasn't like the women's basketball was garbage because it wasn't, Chris. It wasn't. No. You know, I, I think that, you know, they tried when I said they tried to mimic it with the men. They tried to get the the, the whole narrative of, of Zach Eady, the player of the year. But we all know he's not playing at the next level. And I think that's that's another thing that detracts, you know, uh, Caitlin Clark's playing the highest level basketball we've seen women play in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, you watch the, the the men's final four and I'm like, ah, eh, none of these cats are making it to the league. Right. So I think that that there's that, there's that little weight hanging over them as well. So uh, I, I think that that watching people perform at their best is something that everyone can get behind. Again, I hope it translates to the WNBA, but I'm not so sure it does. And it may be, a terrible take, but I don't know if Caitlin Clark is as dominant in, in, in the WNBA unless she starts getting superstar love, which is maybe what it needed the whole time, you know? Possibly. The one thing is, is she'll have to get stronger. Uh, because yes. those women are professionals. And, and, you know, somebody pointed this out earlier today. It's like, look, it's one thing when you're playing for NIL money and stuff like that. When you get to the WNBA, you're playing for a mortgage. You know, you're you're playing for a car payment. You're paying or playing to to help your family. You know, it's not just okay. You know, I got some NIL money. I want to be popular on campus. This is the real deal basketball. So she'll have to get stronger. Um, but I think it'll translate. I, I don't know if it'll translate. And again, we'll get into her legacy later. I don't know if it'll translate to her being the goat. But I never thought she was that to begin with. Right. But flipping it over to the men, look, I mean, UConn was just that much better than everybody. They were just um, – they, they've got something going. I did a, a podcast earlier, and I was talking, is it a dynasty? If you win 20 – or in 25 years, if you won six titles, doesn't that have to be a dynasty, CC? Well, no. 25 years is too spread out to be any side of dynasty. But back-to-back -back champions – in a sport where everybody great leaves early, I think can get you there. Well, hold um, on, you know, hold on. They call the Patriots a dynasty, six titles in 20 years. And they give them a dynasty. Yeah, and, you know, I, I probably have the wrong take for that because, you know, you can get six titles, but when two of them are given to you, I'm kind of oh, yeah. out. You know, shout, shout out to some big Patriots fans out there. I know Allie is one, but, you know, I'm out on that one. So, no, uh, two, two, two titles in two years – is, is awesome. Back to back. Um, you know, uh, Ryan Krause had a comment up there like 
the women's games were better because they had action and more movement. You know, there could yeah, be something else true. at work here, Big B, is, you know, everybody's getting tired of the NBA and 130-point games and, you know, ISO ball with the flop and a foul. You know, uh, maybe people like to see good – maybe basketball is entertaining enough without ref intervention. And there was some good old rivalry, some good old, you know, team – Movement screens, rebounding basketball. Yeah, maybe I mean, that's what people want to see. You're, I'm with you on that, but it's not true though. Because if you if you watch UConn, that's all they did. That's literally all UConn did was ball movement, side to side, screening, running off it. I mean, that's their entire offensive sets are right. built upon movement. Now, Purdue, on the other hand, it was right. not. Purdue is okay. I'm going to set a high pick and roll with Edie. He's going to roll to the basket. We're going to throw it to him, and he's going to score. And the other guys aren't good enough to get off one on one sh- to do anything. Sure, we have to play off Edie, but UConn, that's their high level, next level basketball, and exactly what you're talking about. Now the other teams, that's why I thought the 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 UConn Alabama game was really good, but UConn was just better. But Alabama, right. was the same thing. They got up and down the court, shot a lot of threes. They just didn't have the horses to stay with UConn. I think people get caught up a little bit in going overboard and saying, well, the women's game, it was so much better. It was more competitive. Let, let's yeah. say that it was more competitive because the teams were closely matched, but the basketball and the men, UConn is just better than everybody. You can't fault them for that. And maybe well, that's but, why people didn't like it because th- there was no suspense in who was going to win. I, I felt like there was, and I know I was the odd man out and I even picked Houston to win my bracket at work regretfully. Uh, But, you know, UConn did play a beautiful game. They did play a beautiful game last night. But I would say on the women's side of the bracket, more games were played that way, you know. And also I thought UConn was very well coached. I think the whole, you know, Edie got off and got started. And don't tell me that you didn't think, oh, boy, they're in a boatload of trouble early on. They couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. But they they let him wear himself out. They let him take bad shots. They played team ball and Klingon just kind of became, they occupied themselves with Klingman the whole time, you know, and, yeah. and everybody got off and it's a team game. And when you got three or four guys scoring 14, 15 points, you're in a world of hurt, you know? Uh, so I, I think there is a little, uh, you know, fondness. You got probably the oldest man in the chat talking about UConn played out. He remembered it 50 years ago when there wasn't a three point line. And that's, you know, I know that old guy. He can flat ball. So uh, he's a man's know, the, man out there. He's a man's man, right? <laughs> but I, I get that. So I think that people want to see that. And it and it was yeah, it was refreshing to see the big man back, like like yeah. like uh Ken was saying in the chat. Correct. You know, just the return of the big man, you know, it, it got boring in, in in the 90s, come down, throw it to the big man, and then as soon as he bounced it, here comes the double team. Yes. But I, I think the big man is only boring when everybody else ain't playing basketball, when the big Correct. man can distribute, when the big man's got a, a, a you know, a, a, an entire bag, as the kids would say now, that's good freaking basketball. What's yeah. not good basketball is the freaking ISO guard uh, that's been so popular for so long time. So, I, you know, you know me, I'm not a college hoops fan. You made a believer out of me. Uh, and, and both brackets were entertaining as hell to watch. Yeah. Well, the one thing about it is, is college basketball, people enjoy the women's game because just what everybody said, there was a lot of ball movement because they're not, they're not doing ISO stuff. I mean, the teams that did like USC with Juju Watkins, they did a lot of that and they didn't make it. They didn't end up making it to the final four because you know what? You got to play team basketball. It's when you get down to it in the women's game, when it gets down to the, the final eight, or the final four. The teams are so good where individual talent can only take you so far. Now, that was different with Caitlin Clark, but I would be on the reverse side of that. People think she played with a bunch of bums, and she doesn't. She didn't play with just a bunch of girls that couldn't play basketball. That wasn't the case. People act like those girls from Iowa. It was only her, and if you think that, I'll be the first person to say it, you don't know ball. Ain't that what they say these days? You don't know ball. Yeah. So stop all the glazing, you know, <laughs> on Caitlin Clark. Stop the glazing and just want, you understand what you're watching, you know. That's just me, though. That's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. 
Yeah. But I don't yeah. think I am. 